Dear friends, today we have a special episode of Super Tony's Adventures. Enjoy! A little girl woke up from some unpleasant noise outside her room, so she decided to call for her mother. She answered and gently told her daughter to come to her room. So, the little girl sat on her bed and started looking for her slippers with her feet. But suddenly, she felt a cold hand around her right ankle. She started screaming and fell to the floor. Someone or something was pulling her into the darkness under the bed. The little girl tried to fight, but there wasn't anything she could do. And soon after, she found herself under the bed. She was so scared that she couldn't even scream, but she could feel someone's breathing heavily behind her. Suddenly, she heard the sound of a lighter and the darkness disappeared. She saw her mother next to her, holding her finger to her lips, asking the girl to stay silent. Her hair was all messed up and her eyes were full of terror. And right then, the door to the room creaked. Her mother took her finger off the lighter and the light went out. The little girl and her mother stopped breathing and looked at the door. Tears were running down the little girl's face as she couldn't really understand what was happening. The door finally opened and in the darkness, they saw someone entering the room. From under the bed, it was impossible to know who it was, but the little girl saw a pair of naked feet. Suddenly, the room was filled with a rotting smell. The mother put her hand over her daughter's mouth to stop her from screaming. Someone or something walked to the wall in front of the bed and started scratching it, and they could finally see the figure standing in front of them. It was a skinny, tall creature with a bold head and long nails. 20 minutes passed. The mother and the daughter were shaking from fear while looking at the creature. But suddenly, the mother stopped shaking and took off her hand off her daughter's mouth. The girl looked at her and asked, What is it, mommy? It's over, she said without trying to keep her voice down. And only then did the daughter saw what the creature had written on the wall. Mwahahaha! <laughs> There are now more than 2 million people affected by the disease all over the world. The number of deceased is growing too. In our country, there have been 2,000 new cases in the last 24 hours. The borders are closed and hospitals are… I turn off the TV, forcing the presenter to finish his monologue. I have to go to work, despite the pandemic. My head hurts since yesterday and this morning I woke up coughing. I don't look too good either. I should have asked for some sick days and stayed at home, but my boss ordered me to finish this project before the end of the month, so now I'm leaving my apartment and going to work. The weather outside is awful, and even a healthy person would get sick under such conditions. The freezing wind and the cold rain hit me in the face, while the few people on the bus stop tremble with cold. I go down to the subway. So weird. It's a weekday, but there's almost no people around. I walk through the ticket barrier, frowning because of my headache and sniffling. The station is unusually dark. I step on the escalator and can't see a thing. The next thing I see is a doctor in a mask. And an ambulance? Right. I'm on stretcher. I feel an injection on my hand, and my eyes are closing without my knowledge. I wake up in a ward. There is only one bed. The walls are all white, and there are some machines around me making noises. I stay in my bed waiting for someone to come, but I get tired and try to get up. My headache is gone, by the way. I'm not coughing and sniffing, either. I actually feel pretty good. I should find a doctor, because I must go back to work and end the project. I reach the door, but it's closed and I can't open it. I have no phone. There aren't any buttons to call a nurse. I walk around the bed and sit down. Suddenly, the lights go out. A second later, the emergency lighting system turns on and I hear a click on the door. It probably opened up automatically. There's no one in the hall, only the doors to other wards and the same emergency lights. I open a random ward and find a patient lying in bed. He's beyond anyone's help. There is blood on the pillow next to his head and the body's in a very weird position. He's clearly dead. I keep walking and at the end of the corridor, I see the nurse's station, but there's no one around and the phone on the table isn't working. I find a staircase and go to the first floor. It's all very quiet. Too quiet, maybe. There's no one on the street either. I see an abandoned ambulance in front of the hospital. Strange and scary. I go back to the hospital and get my clothes back, and my phone too. Inside, 
The emergency lights are also working. There are no people around. There are no trains either. I decide to go home on foot. Thankfully, it's not too far away. I only saw one person on my way home. At the end of the block, there was a silhouette. I called them and started running, but they were faster and hid somewhere from me. What a weird experience. There were no cars either, only the wind, playing with some papers on the sidewalk. I took one of them. I could read the words safety measures and the date, March 13th, but I left home on February 21st. I found a small convenience store open on my way home. The door wasn't closed, so I got in. It was pretty much empty. There was only garbage and shattered glass next to the open cash register. There I found what I was looking for, a newspaper stick. On the first page of one of them, I saw my photo with the title Patient Zero. I felt sick. My legs gave way and my headache came back after seeing this. Am I to blame for all of this? In the article, I read what I intuitively already knew. Patient Zero was hospitalized on February 21st after he passed out on a subway station. But the next paragraph was more intriguing. The patient passed away, despite the efforts of the doctors. And then the same information I saw on the piece of paper on the street. Call a doctor if you have a fever, if you have a severe cough, headache, or redness on the skin. Wait, why am I alive then? Alive in a dead city? Or am I? In some hospitals, patients wear a colored wristband with their names on it. The color of the wristband depends on the patient condition and their diseases. For example, red wristbands mean that a patient has passed away. Once upon a time, a surgeon was working late at night, performing an especially difficult operation. When he finished, he went to the basement, which, by the way, was the place where the morgue was. He entered the elevator along with an unknown woman. When the elevator arrived to the basement, the doors opened and he saw another woman waiting to go up. But before she had time to move, the doctor shut the elevator's door and pressed the button to the last floor. The woman inside was very surprised by the rude behavior of the doctor and asked for an explanation. The surgeon told her that he had just operated that woman, but sadly she had died, which was obvious since she was wearing a red wristband. The woman smiled, raised her hand and said, like this one? A high school student was very bored at class and was looking at the window. He then saw a photograph lying on the grass. During recess, he went out and picked it up. It was a photo of a very beautiful girl in a red dress and red shoes. She was showing two fingers. The boy started asking around to see if anyone knew the girl, but nobody did. After coming home, he placed the photograph next to his bed. In the middle of the night, he woke up hearing a soft sound. The sound of someone scratching at the window, and then he heard a woman laughing. The boy went out of his house to see where the laughter was coming from. It sounded farther and farther, but the boy didn't realize how he ended up in the middle of the street. And then a car hit him. The driver stopped and tried to save the boy, but it was too late. And then the man noticed a photograph next to the boy. He saw a very beautiful girl in a red dress and red shoes. She was now showing three fingers. What, are you scared? <laughs> this is just the beginning. Listen to the next story. This time, it happened to me. Some time ago, I was putting my son to sleep when he told me, Daddy, can you check if there's any monsters under my bed? Just for fun, I decided to look under the bed, and I saw a boy looking exactly like my son. He was shaking with fear, and he whispered to me, Daddy, there's someone on my bed. Boo! <laughs> hey, hey, stop shaking. I was joking. I found this story online. So, for dessert, let me tell you the most hair-raising story ever. So, day 326, 
and the internet is still not working. <laughs> Terrifying, right? Okay, okay, no more stories, relax. So friends, tell us in the comments if you know any creepy stories. The best comment will be featured in the next episode. See you next time in a new episode of Super Tony. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Bye-bye.